Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, and I'm on my Sussex border walk. And I've continued from where I was before at Atherington and Climping, which is back that way. And I'm walking now towards Middleton on Sea and Bogner. And I've come at the high tide. And this is interesting because it helps tell the story of what happened here along this little stretch of coastland and I can tell you that the tide along here is pretty ferocious as indeed is the wind had to come out from the seafront because the wind is just too severe and there's a lot of spray as well so I've come just the other side of the sea defence really here in the first part of this walk um, at Elmer and as you can see Elmer is now very much uh, developed into housing and very exclusive housing I have to say and uh, you only have to look around all the roads have got yellow lines on them so there's no parking down here and most of these uh, are in private estates and it seems to be a very big area full of these private estates which um, I think pretty much started in the 1920s but before we get to any of that I want to just walk up this way a little bit back where I came although I'm coming across the coastal path because at the eastern boundary of the parish here of Elmer and then into Middleton was a ditch a big ditch and at one point there was a pool and in the pool there were eels and that's how Elmer gets its name because it was the eel pool and later it became Elmer so the eel pool was around in about 950 something like that um, and it survived until about the 1600s but in 1700 and the mid 1700s and 40s something like that it was drained because they needed a sluice gate because of the coastal erosion that was coming in all the time. Now we heard about all of that on the last video when I was at Atherington and we heard about the disappearance of Cudlin, um, Cudlow. Somewhere just at the end of this housing here is I think where the ditch was it was a rife I think it had a sluice gate and then the pond was somewhere at the back here um, this, the idea of the sluice was as the sea overcame the sea defences it would fill up at the rife and then it would be a one-way gate really to take the seawater back in but over time it got completely overpowered by the sea so it was pretty useless really this is the problem on this area this stretch as indeed many stretches of Great Britain is this constant erosion and this is very much the story that was happening here and a little further to Middleton on Sea which is sort of the adjoining town really
it's hard to imagine that this whole area at one point was farmland all of this wasn't here this was speculative building in the 1920s by I think it was Captain Caldicott who came here I may have got that name wrong um, a prospective builder who was building houses between something like 1924 and 1928 and he was able to claim at one point that he was putting up houses at the rate of one house every 10 days which is just ridiculous but um, there's a farmhouse buried in here the remains of it there was a farm and all the farm buildings and if you look at old maps it's it's here there was a farm but this is all a private estate I'm sticking to the public footpath however uh, which of course they can't obliterate but just walking through here you feel I don't know maybe it's just me I feel it's very very posh and very very private Just skirting this wall here this is where the farm Elmer farm was of course it's all new builds as I say but there's elements of things that might have been here from the farm there's a car park pretty much where most of the buildings were but down this drive private driveway is a 19th century building there as you can see with flint and rubble, all the cars and what have you parked outside it. That must have been, and I believe is, the old farmhouse, still surviving in this busy mess of complete new builds. Come round what looks like an old building. I don't know if this was part of the farm here. And you come to a car park, which, um, when I looked on Google Images, you could park in here, but it was going to cost you a fiver, so I didn't park here. I've actually had to park further up as I make my hopping journey. But this here, uh, customer only, it says, but this here, along here, is where the farm buildings would have been that you see on the old maps. And then behind me there, the farmhouse. And all of this complete farmland, certainly in the 1800s and in the Victorian period. I guess for whatever reason they sold out and now we see all this. In my mind, rather cluttered area. But we're going to carry on a little bit further because there's a lot more to this story. I've arrived in Middleton on Sea now, working my way westwards, and I have arrived at St Nicholas Church, and here it is. And it's a very lovely looking little church, obviously well loved and looked after. It was consecrated in 1849, and I don't know if parts of these, this part of the church, or any bits of this material, has been salvaged from the earlier church which was further south. That's got the more interesting story. This is very nice and very lovely to look at, but it was only built because the previous St. Nicholas had disappeared into the sea. I'm heading back down to the seafront now. I don't know how much filming I can actually do because the wind is incredibly oppressive. 
blowing against me. I have protected the microphone. I know people say, oh, you don't have to keep telling us this, but I'm doing my best. The sea is also chucking out a fine salt spray, which is getting over the lens and difficult to wipe off. I'm coming down. This is a public footpath. The fascinating thing about this area is there are public footpaths which must really upset the people on the private estates because you go through the private estates, you can't park anywhere. Um, I'm finding it very oppressive, actually. I'm, I don't know what it is. There's just a certain atmosphere I'm finding, personally, not very welcoming. I wouldn't want to live here, but I'm sure it's very nice. I'm sure the people are very nice. I don't want to be somebody who's uh, slagging the place off. It's just not, it's just not for me. It's all too gated, and I don't like that. But particularly along the coastline, you just get that feeling that they really don't want anybody to come down here. Yet in the 1920s, of course, this was quite a, a tourist attraction. People were coming down here and people wanted to live down here, which is, I guess, why all these houses are here. Now it's just closed off. But I'm, the reason I'm coming down here is to have a look at the site, if I can find it or get close to it at least, where the old church was, because it has an interesting story. You can probably hear the roar of the sea and I may well be overexposed. And I'm back down and the sea comes really quite close to the houses. It is quite staggering how close it comes. This is at high tide, of course. Here it comes, almost running up to my feet as I stand here. The houses are, I guess, about 10 feet above. And the roar of this is just incredible. And the spray. I'm just going to retreat up to this bush. But hopefully you can see me and still get a sense of where I am. So there was a 13th century church here. That is so loud, it is really loud, that sea. There was a 13th century church. About, I don't know, a quarter of a mile out that way into the sea. St Nicholas it was called. And over time, the church found that the erosion kept coming closer and closer. And I can imagine that was quite frightening. And this carried on. People went to church. Each year, the sea was eroding closer and closer until, well, I think it was 1789. I may be wrong. Um, Charlotte Smith, who was a poet of the time, wrote a sonnet. It's become quite a famous sonnet. Um, about the church and about the churchyard because what was happening was the churchyard was basically becoming disturbed the graves were being opened up and human remains and bones could be found along the shoreline as their relatives of the people in Middleton were being washed up quite ghastly and quite grisly. Eventually the church succumbed to the sea and it was about 1839 I think was the last time they managed to hold any kind of congregation in there and then uh, they decided they needed to build a new church. <laughs> 